Let me get your attention, folks, for a little bit more. I want to show you a couple more tools um, that should get you further towards uh, making our photoreal gummies. Um, we're going to start to talk about a very particular type of modeling called subdivided surface modeling, which is exactly what it sounds like. You take a surface and you break it into more surfaces. Now, the reason this is important is that you probably have hit the point where you have some object and you're playing around with it and you need to get more detail in it. You need an extra line, an extra edge, an extra polygon, an extra point. These are techniques that get you to that. Um, I'm going to show them to you and then you can play around with them and they go on top of all the stuff we already know, the one, two, three, the QWER. Um, I'm going to start with a cube, which is actually how people oftentimes do start uh, when they're subdivided surface modeling. I'm also going to show you something. If I hold down a control key, see how those change? If I double click it, I get a unit primitive. A unit primitive is just a default sized one that's one by one by one. Um, so it's dead centered in the middle of everything, which is good. Um, now, let's look at some of these tools to create more geometry just when and where we need it. Uh, you'll notice I've already dropped this, so getting more detail into it is going to be um, an issue. Not too big of an issue, I'll show you. Um, I'm going to select a polygon. I'm in polygon mode. And I'll select a polygon on the other side, too, like that. And I have tabs over here um, in that I have so many tools that they can't store them all in one place. Now. If I go to a tube, since I have a uh, tab, I should say, since I have polygon selected that says polygon, I will get things that relate specifically to polygons. And these are all sorts of tools that do things to add more geometry. Uh, with that said, I'm going to show you under basics some ones that are just sitting there under the right mouse button. Uh, when I click my right mouse button, I get what's called a modal menu. A modal menu is a menu that changes based on what mode I'm in. So you'll see when I'm out here, it's giving me other stuff. And when I'm down here, it gives me these modeling operations. I'm going to choose this modeling operation called bevel and watch what happens when I do. OK, I got a tool. We can already see we have tool settings over here. And if I click anywhere, I'm going to get the interactive part of that tool. There's the interactive part of that tool. Uh, you'll notice it has two controls. One control stretches out like that. The other control scales the whole thing like that. See that? What's happening on the other side? Oh, I must have dropped that other polygon. Um, it also changed my selection so that my selection is now this new polygon that got made. And you see I have more detail now. Uh, I'm going to drop the tool and I'll pick some other polygons. I'll pick that one and that one, and let's right mouse click. Oop. Let me do that again. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to shift select this one, and then right mouse click. Ah, why am I? You know what? I'm not holding down my right mouse, is the problem here. Ah, one more time. Polygon, shift polygon, right mouse me. Why are you not right mouse me? I'm going to escape my way out of here a little bit. Um, escape generally gets you out of stuff when you're in trouble, like I feel I am right now. We'll try that again. Finally, good. Okay, I'm going to bevel these polygons. And again, if I click, I get something in the middle, and you'll see it's doing both of them together. Uh, when I selected them like that, it should do that geometrically. Uh, and let's say I want to do something else with them. Let's go into scaling mode. If I scale them, I'll push them out like that. See that? Uh, again, if you have questions, you can ask. Um, OK, so I've already modified that a bit with this tool called Bevel. Um, let's try something else. I'm going to go into Edge Mode, and I'll pick this edge and this edge, and I'll right mouse click, and I get similar tools. Let's try Bevel on an edge. And that's sort of what you think of when you think of beveling an edge of a table or something like that more directly. And um, you know what else I'm going to show you while we're here? 
I have our one, two, three, our different modes of selecting points, edges, and polygons. And something I want you to notice is that if I go back to polygon mode, my old polygon selection is still there. If I go back to edge mode, my old edge selection is still there. Uh, I haven't picked anything in point mode, although it's still it's using that, which is what I wanted it to do anyway. I can get the points selected that were part of these edges by holding down my Alt key. See how that says Convert? I'm going to click Convert, and then it gives me the points that were part of that edge. So I can convert a polygon selection to a point selection, a point selection into an edge selection, uh, and let's try to right mouse click and look for a bevel operation here. And again, wherever I click, it should start to do the thing I'm talking to. Now, I want you to notice something about this. Um, do you see how it's getting more curved? That basically, as I told you guys before, everything in 3D is points, edges, and polygons, so it's all straight lines. But you can make it look curved. You make it look curved by putting in more detail. When you generally use subdivided surface techniques, the new surfaces that are made tend to follow curves, which tend to give you the ability to make things more curvy as you go. Um, I'm going to show you one other tool here, and then I want to let you play around with these modes and see how you can work them towards our uh, gummies, okay? Uh, I'm going to hit escape to get out of my modes there, and if I click anywhere now, I'll be unselecting, which is good. Um, let's go back to polygon mode over here. We still have those two polys selected. Oh, yeah, no, this will work. I'm going to right mouse and I'm going to try an extrusion. Extrusion pushes something out. I click and then it gives me this tool and you'll see that, yeah. It gives me new geometry around everything. Um, if I scale this selection with my R key, I can kind of make that go up like that. See that? Uh, let's try an edge extrusion while we're here. You, you know what I'm going to use? I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm going to pick this edge here and this edge here. Hold down my shift key. Right mouse them. Let's extrude them. Ah. We'll play with this controller. There we go. And you'll see it made three extra polygons there. Four or five actually, I should say. That go around that surface. Uh, and let's try some point extrusions while we're here. Uh, I'll go over into point mode. Uh, I'm going to use my right mouse button to select. My right mouse button selects anything that's under the grouping of the square when I select it. So I selected those three points. I could select these three points if I wanted to instead, and then I could deselect that one. Yeah, let's just reselect. And I'm going to hold down shift and get this one. Now I'm going to right mouse and let's extrude these guys. And you see we get these same sorts of tools coming out. And we can expand stuff about them. Okay, so anybody remember what this surface was? What this object was? That's right, cube, that's right. Was a cube is no longer a cube. These are some subdivided surface tools that can give you a lot more detail to your model just where you need it, okay? Go ahead, try and give them a shot, see if they can help what you're doing, and get used to working with that 1, 2, 3, QWER, and things like the Alt and Control key to give you different modes. And remember that right mouse button under Selection, if I hit Escape, will give me a bunch of modeling operations, and I just showed you a couple of them. You could play around and see what the other ones do, okay? Okay.